Information security is one of the most important topics in technology today. Is your data secure? Bring Your Own Security Radio is here to help keep you up to date on the latest trends, software, and apps to make sure that your data stays secure. Bring Your Own Security Radio is about to begin. Here are your experts, Dave and Jason. That's right. I'm Dave. He's Jason, but he's not here yet. So Jason is having a time or two and getting connected to us. We both live in different cities, and he's in D.C. He had something that was very important, and it has rolled over into our live time. Uh, this just goes to show that we don't pre-record most of our shows. We are live, and sometimes our regular job and life just happens to get in the way. So for the next few moments, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, what's happening, and then when Jason's able to join us, he will. Now, tonight, our guest is very exciting for us. Now, we did pre-record this interview. Uh, she, that's right, she, is the CISO of Accenture. Now, if you don't know who Accenture is, they're always in the top three of the world's largest consulting firms. And when we say largest, it's based on number of employees, number of offices, number of dollars, a lot of uh, reasons that we can call them the largest. And I actually used to be a former employee there. So I reached out. Her name is uh, Tammy Moskaitis. And um, as the CISO, she actually came from uh, Vinafi. She's only been with Accenture uh, probably at this point, uh, eight months. Um, Jason was not available at the time. So I recorded the interview with her myself. It is right about uh, 30 minutes long, uh, give or take 15 seconds. So what will happen is uh, once Jason's able to join us, he and I are going to kind of talk a little bit. And then we're going to play that recording. And then afterwards, we're going to kind of come back. And then we will just recap what we all got to hear and uh, talk a little bit about what's coming up next. So if you don't know, and some of you might, some of you might not, um, you know, A, ladies in the uh, IT field are rare enough. Ladies in the information security sector of the IT field are even more rare. And then ladies that are in charge, you know, the, the chief information security officers or the chief information officers in a corporation, big or small, is even more rare. So for for her to be in such a leadership role and for her to be sought out as much as she has been throughout her career is a great testament that this field isn't just for the boys anymore. So I've always been, and, and I have a now almost 12-year-old daughter. I have uh, two other daughters in their 20s. And one of my daughters is a teacher, and she got her degree in math and science and with a minor in information technology. I wanted to be sure that my daughters were capable of doing things in the technology world on their own for as much as they wanted to, either for a career or just for personal enrichment. And so I've always been a big proponent of just getting in there and getting it done. And if, if you're not... Um, willing to, to do that for yourself. If you have a child, please, whether they are male or female, please, um, you know, get kind of get them comfortable around technology. You know, it's not to say that they can't be comfortable around hand skills like being a welder or a wor wood worker. <laughs> Funny for me to say fast, right? But um, anyway, be you know, obviously as parents, we always encourage our kids. But if you have a daughter who shows even the slightest inkling into uh, technology, please help guide her. Because as this field grows, you know, having guys and, and men the way that we sometimes think, um, sometimes our thought process is so different than um, than how ladies think that we might, you know, make a problem worse or you know, we might not, uh, we might make it, you know, it, it, we might make it longer to kind of figure out the solution. Whereas a female point of view might sometimes cut through the crap, right. And get us right to the, 
to the root of a problem. So it's always best to have different perspectives. You know, we always talk about diversity, and a lot of times people think diversity always means race, um, but we also have to remember gender as well. So if you are um, if you are already in the IT field, ladies, um, please don't be discouraged. And I hope this interview will encourage you to to continue your career path and to maybe even uh, take a look at the the security side of the IT field and and maybe uh, get into that. So anyway, that's all I can say about that particular process. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and run her interview, and hopefully Jason will join us afterwards. Um, if not, uh, this will be the Dave and Jason show with Dave. <laughs> so again, thanks for tuning in to Bring Your Own Security Radio. You can always find us at bringyourownsecurity.net. You can listen to our podcast from the player that's right there on the webpage. Or you can download us from iTunes, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn. Uh, what else is there? Of course, the iHeartRadio app, uh, which is very rare. And uh, we appreciate iHeartRadio for thinking so much of us to include us in their library. So just go to any of those apps or any other um, podcast software that you happen to like and search uh, Bring Your Own Security and uh, you should find us and uh, you also find some of the older episodes of Dave the IT Guy and so that's pretty awesome as well. So um, anyway, thanks and um, we're going to get started with Tammy and um, we'll talk to everyone again soon. Well, as we've mentioned already and as we've uh, let everybody know for weeks now, we have a rare opportunity to to have one of the ladies of InfoSec with us. And, you know, this is a rare topic for us because, A, there's just not enough women that are in leadership positions in the InfoSec part of IT. So we've, we've been lucky enough to corner uh, Miss Tammy Moskaitis from Accenture. Um, I, there's not much I could say. If you've ever done anything in IT uh, or even know what Google looks like, you could probably go out and find a boatload of information. So hopefully over the next 20 or 30 minutes, we're going to find out some things that aren't on Twitter and aren't on Google uh, about her and, and the things that are near and dear to her. And maybe she'll even educate the rest of us on what we're doing wrong. So without further ado, Tammy, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Well, I am going to start right off with what I thought was fun uh, with Twitter. So on your Twitter page, which is uh, at Queen of Candor. So where did that name come from? Did you give it to yourself? I mean, I can make some guesses, but how did Queen of Candor end up your name? Um, there's, there's actually a story behind it. Um, oh. I, over the years, have been a pretty tough negotiator when it comes to vendor negotiations from being a CISO, a career CISO most of my career. So uh, what happened one day is that one of my vendors was just like, I can't believe how rough you are, but you're so polite about it. And we kind of <laughs> joked on and off about it. And, um, but, you know, I didn't want to waste their time if I wasn't interested, right? But more importantly, I wanted to make sure that I could always provide feedback, opinions, suggestions, or whatever came my way. And I really came really close partners with my vendors. So one day I opened a box that came into my uh, inbox at work, and I opened it, and in there was a little glass um, business card holder. And the front of the business card holder is etched Queen of Candor. It actually is etched. I have it in front of me. It's actually etched Tammy Muscaitis, the Queen of Candor. So um, I've, I still have it on my desk today, and I've had it all these years. But it wasn't anything to be, um, you know, rude. It's just that I really believe that integrity is my foundation of who I am. So I, I always say that candor is one of my best qualities. So when I was trying to think of a Twitter handle, I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> Well, and that's that's actually the the story that I th or a very similar story that I thought I would hear, um, but it, it is refreshing because uh, unfortunately, and I'm sure you've dealt with it far more than me, when someone 
who is very candid and or very firm or aggressive, um, those are usually not the words associated with that person and how they're viewed. And I'm sure um, as a, a female in that particular role in that field um, that you've probably heard some of those terms. So it's, it's awesome that you're able to, to take that and, and make it a positive and make it a way to, to form those partnerships. I mean, is that how you think it's turned out for you or, or do you still have to fight some of the stigma? Well, you know, there's always stigma, not just in security for women, but just in, in the market for women in general. But, you know, over the years that I really chose to live my life by not just doing the right things right, but doing the right things right and for the right reasons. So, you know, not letting anyone compromise my integrity and, you know, over the years I've had to grow some very thick skin. Um, you know, I think that we, you have to come off um, positive, self-confident, and, and you can't let people get under your skin. Right on, very true, and, and as you said, very true in almost every sector, no matter what you're doing these days. So let's talk a little bit about you, um, uh, and I'm not going to steal, hopefully I won't steal much of your thunder, if any, but um, you had a fairly wide-ranging background. You've been involved with Home Depot, um, Bank One, Aetna, um, quite a few other major players in in the world of corporate, um, corporate everything, you know, so you're not just... Um, into the uh, IS side of things or the IT side of things from a vertical with some of the other companies. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what you've been. And then also tell us a little bit about your um, 2013 awards that you won. Wow, those are a lot of questions. But, uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, anyone that, that knows me and, and has known my career has known that I started from a very entry level. So I really started as a word processor in a law firm in Hartford, Connecticut. So I really worked my way up and uh, really focused on um, focusing on going to companies that were going to challenge me, provide me career growth, but also I wanted to make sure that professionally um, that I was growing, right? So I wanted to make sure I was doing things that actually added value. There are jobs where I went and um, became bored and moved on. And, you know, some people could sit behind a desk and collect a check all day, but I just always need to be challenged. And um, over the years, if you look at the companies, as you were saying, you know, I, I just left a company, Benefy, which is a completely different company. It's a very small company um, that's been around a long time uh, where I hold a dual role. I was their CIO and CISO. Um, but prior to that, I was with all these Fortune X companies, like you said, Time Warner Cable and banks and insurance companies. With that being said, uh, the opportunity for career growth always changes. So for me, when I look at the accolades or the ability to volunteer or awards, um, those are always things that make make you feel good, right? Make sure it makes it kind of validates that you're doing the right things uh, and making a difference in the security community. I've been in the security before security was cool, right? Before anybody even knew what security was. <laughs> nice. You know, being a woman in IT and being in security was really interesting. Um, I was in actuarial at Aetna, and I was assessing risk, right? What's the average likelihood of an event to occur? Back then, the average likelihood of an event to occur was the morbidity tables, which was a little bit different, but it's the same thing as assessing risk today is the average likelihood of an event to occur and what's the impact to the company, the brand or your reputation. So it's been a very interesting career for me. So I read uh, that in 2013, you were listed um, the top woman in technology. Um, I believe that was through ISACA, is that correct? And, and along those lines, you're also involved with other InfraGuard and a few other boards as either a volunteer, a director, or some other process in which you're volunteering your time. So tell us a little bit about how that award came to place and what that award really means. Gosh, you know, um, 
to be noted as top of anything, right, and top women in technology is exciting, and it, and it validated that what I'm doing is making a difference to the community. Um, one of my most interesting ones is I actually won an award in Australia uh, for a woman of the week uh, there when I was down speaking at some ISACA events. So the impact is, is global, um, but the uh, opportunity to share information is, is awesome. The volunteer work that I do with organizations, whether it's ISACA or um, EC Council and uh, MISI and, oh gosh, I think just continue to go on, I'm just very fortunate that I can volunteer my time as well as educate the community on security, but I just don't talk about security. I talk about careers and women in security and how we can grow professionally and challenges we have finding employees and a whole market of different discussion points. You know, so just in a few minutes, it's, it's been very clear that for you to help attract younger girls or to excite them about whether it be InfoSec or just some area of the IT field as a potential career path, it, it's clear that's important to you. So can you speak a little bit to, about, you know, maybe in general or maybe specifically about what, what, what's being done now that might be a little better, but what more can be done to try to, to entice these young ladies into, into thinking that IT is cool? You know, it, and it's hard to teach them that IT is cool. The perception is that technology, you're working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And some of the children actually see their parents doing the same thing, working a lot of hours, right? They said, I'm not going to work a million hours like my mom or dad do or whatever. But what you need to do is we really need to educate and bring security and bring IT to not just the young girls, but the young boys as well, right? To really teach them that, you know, security is cool and IT is cool. STEM is a great start, but you still have to bring the people to the program, right? You still need to bring the kids to the program and get them interested. Uh, Girl Scouts now offer um, a cybersecurity badge, which I thought was a real awesome step forward. But we as security professionals, IT professionals, need to get into a school and volunteer our time, whether it's just going to the schools, big brothers, big sisters, after school programs, and talk about what we do and, and why we do it and how exciting it can be. You know, explain to the young women, I, I do all the time, I explain them all the time, it's like, do what makes you happy, do what you love, love what you do, right? And that's what you need to do in order to be successful. Women in general, I mean, have been challenged with getting equal pay and equal opportunities for career advancement. Believe me, I was second choice many times in my career, many times. So, you know, what I also do on the side is I, I do a cybersecurity scholarship that I go back to my high school and uh, have them write a one-page essay of why cybersecurity is cool, and I give that out every year. And it's, it's the way that I can give back, but also gives an opportun another opportunity for kids to start thinking about how they can make a difference. Very nice. There's a, yeah, Very nice. there's another program I just wanted to mention. It's with ISACA. They, do, they have a program called She Leads Tech. And uh, it's a very interesting program, but it's really focusing on getting women into leadership roles and management roles and into security. And it's something they kicked off uh, last year, and it's something I'm really involved with. So it's also another another niche area. I see that you uh, write, or at least at some point, you were writing very actively for CSO Online, and you were writing some articles, some you know short one pagers, and, and others maybe a little bit longer. Um, but you, you really focus or you touched on quite a few topics that were potentially controversial at the time, but at the very least, um, you were bold enough to, to raise some of these questions and, and maybe draw the attention of, of some folks. So there's one or two I just want to throw at you real quick and just give me some idea about what, what 
what you thought at the time of why you wrote it and and, and maybe what you've seen since uh, that the article was written. And one is you wrote a topic called Who Makes Better Cybersecurity Decisions, Men or Women? Tell us a little bit about kind of where that came from and, and what you think has changed maybe since. Um, actually, that was one of my favorite blogs. Uh, that was written almost a year ago, uh, last February, I think. Uh, the interesting thing about that particular one is that, you know, what I was finding more and more is that when I get in a room with decision makers, whether it's men or women, that I found that when we brought a more diverse group of people to the table, we were getting more creative ideas. So I think that what ended up driving a lot of this is like, you know, we as women, sometimes we rely more heavily on, you know, intuition, right? Whereas, you know, maybe some people just run by their gut, whether it's a man or a woman. But, you know, in general, what I felt is that this is something that needed to be focused on. I, I was just in so many meetings full of men. <laughs> I wanted to bring some other mindsets into the room. Um, there was some definite things in that article that uh, raised some eyebrows and also, um, also brought some questions and some messages to me. Nothing negative. It was just more of like the girl kind of thing. Thank you for, you know, for raising this. Um, but, you know, once again, my Twitter handle is at Queen of Candor. I, I talk how I feel. <laughs> so, you know, um, is there anything specific around that that, that caught your eye? Well, well, I guess so. For me, as I read it, um, you know, I, I came into the IT field personally from a very different direction. I was an Army person who had no real computer experience and I, I accidentally fell into IT in the late 90s and um, not being a female of course I didn't have that particular challenge but my challenge was at the time of being undereducated I had not yet attended college I had absolutely no computer experience and um, I thought I was pretty swift because I knew how to use uh, AOL and a few bulletin boards so I thought I was pretty pretty much top of the heap and um, I found very quickly that I had to to fight my way through a lot of perceptions of being just you know at, for me just too dumb to do it and um, I was able to, I, it felt like I was able to equate some of the challenges not quite equally but um, it's funny that you commented that uh, that men are under stress and they're more eager to take risks because we had to somehow prove that we were we can make the tough decisions whereas nobody else could. Um, do you find that that's still the way it is today or, or do you find that the, the women in leadership roles, or at least around IT, are more willing to push the envelope and, and make those decisions? Well, I think a lot of what you were just saying was more perception, right? But I think overall mm -hmm. that, you know, women in general um, have been taking more and more of a stand. And it's become obvious that we've taken a stand about a lot of things. But in addition, is that you know we make we make this, we make great decisions. Men make great decisions. We all make great decisions. I think that women tend to be more intuitive at times, and men's decision making style is a little bit different than women, right? But here nor there, we all have different styles, no matter what our gender. Right. So I think that if you bring a very diverse, diverse group together, working together, that you'll come up with a much, much better approach. Uh, no doubt about that. We've got just about 10 minutes left. So I'm going to kind of change gears a little bit. Um, I'd like to ask you um, about some of the, the current challenges. So uh, clearly, uh, as you commented, you've been with Accenture for a short time. and me having been a former employee of Accenture out of the Cincinnati office and a consultant, um, I kind of have some idea of what, what we did there and what we saw day to day. But for you, what, what are the, the challenges as you came in that either somebody told you about or that you were able to quickly identify from, um, whether it be holistic, whether you need to help make Accenture better or you need to come in and help 
make your clients more more agile and adaption. So where did you land in Accenture as far as thrown onto the hot plate or have you had some time to kind of grow into your own space? Uh, well, actually, you know, the interesting thing is, is that for me to change my focus to customer focus, security, and being able to partner, you know, I've been a CISO for a long time, as, as you know. So for, for me, what a better opportunity for me, not just to be able to help one CISO or one company, but to be able to use my expertise to help all companies, right? So as like for me, that was exciting, right? I get to do a lot of different things. You know, Accenture really focuses on hiring the best of the best, as you know, from being there, right? So when you hire the best of the best or when you're focusing on partnering, you know, with the Global 2000, you want to make sure that you're driving solutions that are solid, that are reliable. And that's what my decision was to come to Accenture and in the whole, right? For me, it was like, you know, I was excited that I got to go in and not only do strategy and risk, but, you know, cyber and digital identity and AppSec and, and they even have managed services. So when I sat there and said, where can I help the most? I can help our customers around these areas. Staffing is such a concern and such an issue and so difficult with millions of jobs going unfilled in the security world. What a better way to be able to partner with companies to bring in resources or to take over managed services and be able to help them actually get their security posture to where it needs to be. So like my first month at Accenture, I was drowning. I was taking in so much information from so many companies and so many CISOs that it was, uh, I didn't even know where to begin. And finally, just, you know, over the last couple of weeks, I really just sat back and said, you know, we can really make a difference. I mean, they really are making a difference. When you look at the gap and the things that um, the customers are having, it's not just, you know, this company is having this problem and that company is having that problem. All companies are having very similar problems. So it's, it's the ability to come in and, and be, an evangelist, to be a trusted advisor, to be a partner. Yeah, that's a great segue into a question that I had pre-written down and wondered where I was going to fit that in. But so as you talk about having the, the teammates uh, to to help these organizations, um, for, for you to be a valid and uh, invaluable partner, what about looking at resumes has changed for you, um, you know, if if Dave, the IT guy, walks in with his resume and says, "I'm a great IT guy. I can I can do wonders here," how are you able to to take a look? And and that clearly, you're not always going to be the one. You have other people doing things for you. But just from leadership, how do you, you know, are you looking at a resume and say, "Okay, you you've got these five boxes checked." How are you getting past the resume to find those good people to to partner with you? You know, that's, that's an outstanding question. You know, the thing is, is that the resumes we get now, right, um, you really, you can't take them at face value, right? A lot of the sharpest security professionals learn on their own time, right? So what we have to keep in mind is that you're not always going to find that right person on a piece of paper. You have to take the time to do research. You have to take the time to meet, understand with what they've done what they want to do, but take a vested interest. So when you look at the resume, you know, you pick out the keywords and you bring in them, you bring them in for conversation or you talk on the phone. But those are the, those are the things that you have to take the time and invest the time in. There's not enough resumes. That's the challenge. There's just not enough. So when you're looking at the resume, you know, for me, the one resume that doesn't ever get past my desk, is it's when they spell HIPAA with two P's. <laughs> I throw those resumes away. <laughs> that, that, that's a fact. So anybody that ever applies for a job for me, please make sure that doesn't happen. Um, but that's one of my pet peeves, right, is, is that I won't even look at the rest of the resume. They could be walking on water. I don't know. It's something about it. But, um, you know, resumes, resumes are tough, and you can't take them at face value always. 
That's funny. Well, I will have to go and uh, review mine to make sure that my HIPAA is spelled <laughs> correctly. <laughs> I think it is, but now you've got me questioning myself, so I better check it out. So, um, let, let's talk a little bit about stuff, right? So when you go in to company whoever and you were you know, telling them about how we can help. And uh, of course, a lot of things is policy change and process change and, and people education. I mean, if, if you could do those three, th three things, most company security policies would improve greatly, but on occasion they need some things, they need some, some firewalls or they need some, uh, SEIM or they need something to be able to aggregate all of that chunks of data so they can kind of put it together and figure out what's actually happening to us. It, it, at what point do you start um, evangelizing the, the things over the people or is it always just a combination? Well, it is a combination, right? And I think the biggest gap when you think of the companies that I've talked to and the companies I've worked for, and even when I was identified, I talk to our customers all the time. You know, when I look at where their challenges are, really goes back to Security Basics 101. You can't secure and protect what you don't know you have. So there's always a lot of investment in tools and a lot of investment in niche products that happen along the way. But when you look at the assets, the identities, your keys, your certs, your um, crown jewels, so to speak. Those are the things you need to secure and protect and have a good foundational security controls around it. You know, businesses are under assault from cyber criminals like, like never before. And the cost, is, as we all know, is freaking exploding, right? So when you look at, you know, what things do, do they need to focus on? You know, you always talk about the people, process, and technology thing, right? They're all important. You have to make sure that you're meeting your regulatory requirements, that you can't have open audit items, you can't have any significant deficiencies. I mean, there's all these things that you have to maintain from the process of business, but there's also, like I was saying, those foundational things that must be in place. Challenge there is that there's never enough people to do the work. Um, that's, I mean, that's really foundationally is why I went to Accenture, right? I wanted to be able to help people get this stuff done. Very nice. Well, we have come to the end of our agreed time. I know that you are very busy and taking 30 minutes out to, to come and talk to us um, was a substantial um, effort. So you are very much appreciated for coming on with us today. Um, anything that you want to promote, whether it be how to get in touch with you, how to get in touch with Accenture, how to reach out to your favorite charities or organizations that you want to shout out to, this is your time to say whatever it is you want to say that we didn't cover yet. Wow, you should have given me a heads up on that one. No, um, <laughs> you know, um, I, I love what I do. Follow me on Twitter at Queen of Candors. We haven't said that a million times. Uh, follow a center. They have a, at a center secure or at a center in, in general. But here nor there, if anyone wants to get a hold of me, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, you can always uh, reach out to me in any way uh, that you can. Reach out to a center. Ask for me. I'll be more than happy to to help any way that I can. Um, we're doing a lot of great things. I'm very fortunate. I feel very blessed every day that I, I get to do what I love to do every day. And, um, you know, that's, that's really it. Just volunteer your time. Take a minute. Spend some time with kids. Mature, grow, build this world. No doubt about that. You know, one of the things I meant to say and I didn't, so I'm going to add it real quick, is that I know that you've spoken at RSA and, and uh, Black Hat and other places. 2018 is, is new and fresh. Is there any place that, that the public can go to to, to hear you speak and, and possibly get a few minutes in, of FaceTime? Um, what are you doing this year that you know of at least? Oh, those are, I am speaking at InfoSec World in Orlando in March, and I'm also speaking at um, ISACA CAC 
Conference in May, uh, ISSA Los Angeles in May, Black Hat um, speaking at RSA, uh, speaking at the Gartner Security Risk in, in June in National Harbor, Maryland. So, yeah, all over. All I over. Keep up to date. I always keep stuff on my LinkedIn, and I always send out notes out there and, and messages saying, hey, I'm speaking at this conference, or come and see me here, or same with Twitter. I always have stuff out there letting you know where I'm speaking, so those are always good places to go check. Right on, and for those of you that didn't get a chance to write any of that down, if you just check our site, bringyourinsecurity.net. We will have links to all of those great things so that you can keep up and go visit. And um, I can personally attest that I simply reached out via, via LinkedIn, and here she is on our show with us. So I can tell you that she is honest when she tells you that she will respond and help you out. So again, thank you so much for your time. You very much appreciate it. Um, outstanding uh, work that uh, it appears you've done, and it sounds like you've got a path in front of you that um, that will help grow this field, if not by volume of people, hopefully by by knowledge, and knowledge is the key, that's for sure. Well, thanks again for having me, and uh, I really appreciate it. All right, thank you, and so long. Uh, and to everyone else, uh, thank you for listening to this episode of Bring your own security .net. Um, We will be back shortly with just a few more words. Thank you. All right. So, Jason, man, ladies in charge of information security uh, departments and large organizations like Accenture, like Tammy. I mean, that, that she's just one of many who probably belong in those positions and just haven't found their way. So anything that you can think of off the top of your head that we can do to help promote it besides to just keep encouraging, you know, coworkers and others, right, to, to pursue their dreams and get degrees or get certifications or whatever they have to do. What do you think? I agree. It's all about promoting the trade. So, you know, there's always a place to promote the trade. So, it's, um, you know, that's one of the main things we should focus on is maintaining this. You know, I agree. I, I, you know, in my department, I work in an IT department of only uh, 15 of us. And um, I, since I haven't really thought about it until just now, as I said it, I have to think real fast. But uh, we have one, two, three, four, five women out of 15 uh, are five out of fifteen of our staff members and one uh so of our six women, one is actually our department director um and she holds uh a c h c i o certification um has a master's degree mm -hmm. and a bunch of other stuff at one time took the c i s s p test and she's no slouch so you know, yeah. for, you, for you ladies in IT, it's certainly the path is there, and I'm sure you're going to meet resistance, as you heard Tammy just say, that just being a female in general in the in the business world, you've got a few extra challenges that you would think by 2018 we would have overcome, but um, clearly we haven't. So yeah, stay with it, man. Stay with it. So what what um in your so. You, Jason, you work in, in the government sector of IT, and you've been around the government sector now for a long time. How, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to say percentage. Clearly, it would be a guess. But, you know, would you say that you have a, a 10 or 5 or 20 percent? What, what type of, in the government sector for ladies in the IT field, what kind of numbers do you think that you've experienced at least? You gotta imagine I've I've been in two different government agencies, so that that it I have kind of a small view of this. Now, after saying that, I have actually met with a lot of people in a lot of different organizations, and there are a lot of there are a lot of women in positions that um, you know they are definitely handling it. That's for sure, and uh, it's. 
I think it's only getting better, man. It's getting more traction, and I think when it when it when it comes to that, I've you know I've always said it's the best person for the job, and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of bright women out there, and they more than deserve it. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, I I, I just man, I I think that um, my experience so far has been. Oddly enough, I've I've experienced a lot of ladies. I've worked in healthcare IT for a long time, and I've worked in the consulting side, and we consulted with both healthcare and the education sectors. And so, personally, out of the almost 20 years I've been in the field, I've had a better than 12-year experience where I've had ladies who are, have been my boss at various levels, um, and I've certainly had, at the very least... Uh, a good 35 or 40% of my coworkers have been female in those sectors. So for a good majority of my career, I've had that, that interaction where, honestly, I probably can say that I didn't realize that it wasn't the norm or that it was so difficult because they're just, you know, I say they, you know, the ladies are just another co-worker. And I know we yeah. keep beating on the ladies, 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 but I, I still can't get over how much of a surprise it's been to me that there's been that much of a discourse between IT and, and ladies. I thought it was always pretty close to almost 50-50, and now I'm finding out it's not. Yeah, I've uh, from where I've seen IT, it's definitely been predominantly men. Um, and you know that's not to discredit anybody, but uh, you know, the, and lately we've done this. I've actually talked to a coworker. Uh, we were talking about this last week, and we were actually observing the different um, different places in IT where we're seeing like an uptick of actual women. <laughs> you know, kind of getting uh, those numbers getting much higher, and that's that's places like forensics. Mm-hmm. Pen testing. Yeah. Um, I, I've seen. I've watched it. I've watched it uptick. I've I've actually looked at a lot of my uh, contacts in uh, LinkedIn, and a lot of them are you know uh, security analysts and uh, uh, engineers. It's amazing. Yeah, I it, it is amazing. And, and just for the record, uh, I, I I told everybody beforehand that uh, our interview at Tammy had been pre-recorded some time ago and aired tonight. But she just uh, tweeted at us just in the last few moments while we're on live now with Jason and I, um, you know, about her interaction with us. And uh, Tammy, I know that you're still listening. And uh, I'm gonna have to apologize if I keep bringing it up that women this and women that and I, I honestly thought that it it wasn't such a big deal, and it, it, having to research the time to to interview her or having to take my time to do research um, is when it occurred to me that there it wasn't you know IT wasn't almost a sixty forty or fifty fifty uh, male to female split that overall IT in general was definitely heavily dominated by male and. Um, I I just, man, I just didn't realize that. I thought with the the Googles of the world, the Microsofts and all these other companies that they're promoting diversity, that by now we would have got there. So I didn't think it was a big deal. And so, Tammy, again, sorry that I didn't mean to try to make you a poster child, but you certainly educated me and um, I'd be happy to have you as my boss if if life ever leads us back to that way again, and uh, you would certainly educate me far more than I'd educate you. So, um, and my current boss is the same. She's she's so awesome that I I could not be her boss because she would simply outclass me. So, I like bothering awesome. up. God, no. Well, so my current boss has always <laughs> vowed to never listen to this show because she's like, you know, if I hear you uh, say something and I and I think that you're attacking somebody or I think that you're being too mean, that when you come into work the next day, I'm going to get on you about you can't be mean to people. And, and Jason, you know. Oh, man, you be mean, Dave? That's right. Every, everybody knows, Dave. I'm just a big softy. I'm 
nice to everyone yeah, and I don't call anybody I don't call anybody stupid. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well it is just about uh, four forty five minutes um into this program, so nine forty five in the east. Uh Jason and I are here with you nine PM to ten PM Eastern time every Thursday, usually live. There might be a week or two that we might yeah, actually yeah. take some time off. And and Jason, if he ever learns how to use a phone, he might actually be able to dial in. It's tough to say. Yeah, yeah. So, that, yeah, that, that, that's one factor. Yeah. Well, you know, that, maybe next week I can't dial a phone. So who knows? Um, so let's talk a little bit about next week. So next week our guest is going to be a gentleman that, uh, that I know myself. Uh, he is in the information security field in the banking sector. So he's got a whole bunch of different uh, standards and um, organizational frameworks that he has to measure up against than I do oh, in the healthcare yeah. field. So I'm interested in speaking to him. Additional. Yeah, Sox, yep. This remains Oxley, yep. Um, amongst the other stuff. And so he's been around Paul that field Sarbane, for a long was- time. He was, uh, yeah, he was, he was, uh, political in Maryland. Yeah, yeah. Well, so our guy, and I, I won't mention our guest name just yet. We'll leave it as a little bit as a, as a surprise as we announce. Uh, usually we announce uh, our guests via our social media on Twitter and Facebook um, on Sundays. So please hit us up and see who our guest is. But he is in the uh, in that field, and he's been around for a long time. He's been in that field longer than the Enron scandal. So I'm really interested in hearing how his life in InfoSec has changed between well, the before and after. Right now, it, it, it changed. Yeah, I could tell you it probably changed because there's a lot of frameworks that came in. Uh, there was some frameworks that came in during that Enron time. So uh, he probably had, you know, some older frameworks he was working with too. Yeah, well, I I, I know that um, – so I, the way I got to know him was um, he started what's called a SIG, a security um, information group. So it's kind of a – just a group of local people in our region around the greater Cincinnati area that I live in. Um, and we all have a, our specialty interest in security. So he started this group using the meetup.com uh, website. And there's a lot of SIGs out there uh, for you people that might be trying to look for one in your area. And he started this one. He brings in some great speakers, people who are red teamers, blue teamers, purple teamers even. Um, and he brings in vendors too, um, and talks about their products and stuff. And um, you know, there's always some food involved and a little bit of drinking. Unfortunately, not the alcoholic kind, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> Try to get water. Water, yeah, water. I'm getting fat anyway, so what do Apple I? Apple juice. <laughs> yeah, in a bottle maybe. Cause <laughs> I might need a bib and a nipple by the time I'm next ten years. Oh boy. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> well, I'm just getting, getting old. Here. Uh, well, no, I mean, I'm getting old. I'm <laughs> slobbering all over myself. I've been using my walker here lately, and who knows? So, But, yeah, anyway, so it'll be great. So for those of you that are in the um, the banking or insurance uh, industries uh, at whatever level, uh, please tune in. Make sure that you listen live. He'll be with us live uh, this coming uh, Thursday, so a week from today. And um, please uh, join us. And if you join us from the uh, bringyourownsecurity.net website, there is a live player on the top right. And if you click on that dude, there's actually a little chat button and you can chat and ask questions that I will see in a control panel and I can ask our guest on your behalf. So it gives you a chance to interact live with us and our guests. So Please use it. Um, mm. Man, what else we have going on? So Jason and I were talking about Black Hat. Um, they're already booking um, the different classes and stuff. Now, last year I went to Black Hat. It was at the end of July. And by like m- late March, early April, all the classes were booked. And I didn't realize it was yeah. like that, like they announced a class and it's booked. So as soon as classes got mm. announced a couple of days ago... I logged in, and like the a couple of the classes I went were like three and five percent booked up already. 
And I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. So then I looked again today and it's up to 8%. And I'm like, oh, so I hit my boss up with like, we have to sign up. We have to sign up now. I'm not missing this class. I missed it last year because I waited too long thinking there's no way it would book. But um, right now, Jason and I will be out there as media. And uh, we'll yep. be interviewing a boatload of people. So some of it we might even be doing live in real time. So we will update our um, social media. And we might have some live on the fly uh, five-minute interviews in real time with people um, right there in the hallways. And, you know, we might bump into whomever. And, um, you know, last year I grabbed Kevin Mitnick uh, coming out of a, a presentation and uh, I got him to talk about eight minutes with me uh, in real time. So so that's one of the few times where we do a lot of live interviews that are short and, short and sweet um, during the day. So not your normal yeah. 9 to 10 p.m. So, you know, that's August. We've got plenty of time to keep everybody up to speed. But it's coming, and uh, it's a great event for those of you in the InfoSec field. If you've not had a chance to go to Black Hat ever, I and Jason, we cannot pay for you to fly out there. We cannot pay for you to take a class. However, right. there there is a three-day window at Black Hat where there are boatloads of vendors and boatloads of free yep. presentations. And we're going to hold a contest. And we're going to bring one of you with us as a media guest. And so as long as you get yourself to the Vegas, get your own hotel room, you have to pay your own expenses, we'll at least yep. save you $1,600 just to buy a pass to get into this event is 1600 bucks, And we're going to save you that. So we're going to have that contest in June. And we'll announce at the end of June to give you time to um, – Buy your tickets and get a cheap rate. You have more than a month to buy your uh, airline ticket and get yourself a hotel room. So uh, stay tuned in June um, for that. So one of our first big uh, promos and giveaways will be come join us in Vegas at Black Hat. And for those of you that don't know, the day that Black Hat ends, DEF CON starts right there in Vegas, Hmm. right down the road at a different Hmm. hotel. And... You know, where Black Hat is a bunch of vendors and, and presentations, DEF CON is where all the capture the flag and the gaming, and that's where you meet the, you know, the, the guys wearing hoodies over their head that won't talk to you, keeps their cell phones turned off all the time, you know, um, <laughs> they speak different languages, and um, when they boot up uh, their laptop, you know, it takes them 30 minutes to log in because of all the security, so... Um, the DEF CON event, you don't want to miss that either. And uh, and we'll look at getting into that for free as well. So join us, Black Hat, DEF CON, yep. August 4th to the, what's that, 11th, I think. Yeah, August 4th to the 11th. Yeah. So, Jason, what's happening around D.C. in the coming weeks or months that uh, is interesting? You just had... ShmooCon or something just happened out there, didn't it? Or some other event? Yeah, ShmooCon happened last weekend. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we couldn't get press passes for that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I learned the hard way that they are the same. If you don't ask, uh, reach out to them about, you know, press passes and things, like f- six months in mm-hmm. advance, um, it, it's all gone. And I did not realize that. So um, yeah. I missed the boat. I won't do that again. <laughs> but what, so what else? I mean, it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but it um, it seems like DC is is crawling with events, tech, IT stuff. I mean, is it like that? Is there something every week, or is that maybe I'm just wrong? But it sure seems like there's a lot of stuff going on out there. Well, honestly, for me, I've I've kind of been out of the loop. <laughs> There, there is definitely a lot of talks um, of cybersecurity, and it's it's all over the place, and, and a lot of them are free, and a lot of them are inside Washington D.C. So you get like, you know, the cybersecurity tech talk, 
um, is, uh, you know, we work White House, um, the FedTech network, networking mixer, you know, there's other ones for getting started in tech. Um, as you get further along in the year, it, it changes up a little bit. Well, I'm looking forward to um, to getting back out to D.C. for, I mean, for vacation. I like the area, but um, there are some late uh, 2018 events that uh, I'm trying to keep on my calendar to to see how much. And thankfully, my boss doesn't listen to this show very much. But uh, I promise that when I came out to Vegas and spent a bunch of money, I would not ask for a second um, company-paid uh, event this year. But I fibbed. So, um, of course, she probably knew that already before. I, even when she read the email, she probably knew I couldn't keep myself from asking. But um, I'm looking forward to <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting back out to DC. So, uh, and next week again, our guest is in the banking field, so we'll be doing that. We're working on some vendors. So Jason has a couple of vendors he's working on as having guests at I too. And for those of yep. you who think. Man, I'm not listening to that podcast that day because I don't want to hear a bunch of sales crap. Just let you know that we don't nope. want to hear we don't want to hear it either. So we're bringing people on that work for a specific vendor, but they are the tech people of that vendor. So they're going to tell yeah. us how their tech works, not how much. Well, they might yeah. tell us how much it costs too, but it's not going to be like a brochure or a white paper. Exactly right. So, so for those I of hate you that, that crap. yeah, yeah, me too. So for those of you thinking, man, I'm not even thinking about uh, letting this crap in my ears, uh, we aren't going to put it in your ears. So, um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. We're, we're coming at you live in living color with, with good stuff, not garbage. Yep. That's for sure. What else have we got? Man, February 1st is coming up. February 1st has a lot of good stuff. Now, I am actually going to start going back to college now. I've got a degree. Uh -oh. So at first in life, I thought I'm going to get into – I'm going to get a business degree because why? It's the easiest degree I could get is what I thought, right? And I thought, well, shoot, I don't want nothing – hard i don't have to put a lot of effort into nothing so i wanted that and then i got into the it field i'm like business degree suck i don't want that now for all of you business degree people sorry but yeah um but february 1st online through i guess i can give them a shout out western governors university they have a cyber security uh degree um and i am taking that degree or that program and between my certifications and my previous college credit, I should be able to finish a bachelor's in cybersecurity in about seven months. It's all online at my pace, so I'm, I'm mm -hmm. hoping six or seven months and uh, hang a new plaque on the wall uh, for no other reason than to say I did it. Uh, I did something hard, not took the easy route, so... We'll see. Yeah, when you said when you said starting some college, first thing I had in my mind was it. What was that movie that Ronnie Dangerfield went back? To oh college? yeah, yeah, back yeah, back to. <laughs> it's called back, back to, to school. school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, now see, I I when I first went back to college, when I got out of the military, I was like 28 years old, and so I went as a yeah. freshman with a bunch of you know like 17 and 18 year olds. I was about to kill. I'm like, yeah. do y'all know what I've been doing for the last 12 years of my life? I, I've been killing people for a living, and now your drunk ass wants to come here and talk smack. So I I did not do well with that. I'm like, yeah, I won't be living in a dorm, that's for sure. Um, so And at that point, I wasn't married or anything, so yeah, it was funny. But then I also used to joke that my, my freshman year was the best 17 years of my life. So <laughs> uh, hopefully that won't be the case now, too. So again, we'll, we'll see. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. All right. Well, we got about a minute and a half left. I don't have much more that's uh, more important than anything else that we've already said. Again, thank you to our guest, uh, Tammy. Yeah. You were awesome, mm -hmm. and I, um, man, you really uh, opened my eyes. Even, even in some of the things that you didn't say, uh, got me to thinking about some of the things that, um, you know making sure that I'm not doing something personally to impede somebody else's career. 
and that's partly why this uh, this show is so important to me is to for Jason and I to help find ways to help people make their career better yep. um, in some way. So, yep. So thank uh, you again. The, uh, furthering the trade. Yep, exactly. Thank you again. Thank you to my co-host Jason for always having just a great attitude and and being able to <laughs> make sure that we can make this show as good as we can make it. So that's about yep. it. Until next week. Uh, I'm Dave. He's Jason. I'm going to say good night. I'm Jason. Jason, yep. we'll see you next week and uh, good night, everybody. You got it. Good night. Thank you for listening to Bring Your Own Security Radio. Join us every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a new episode. Find us on Facebook and on Twitter at BYOS Radio or find us on the web at bringyourownsecurity.net. Safe browsing, everyone.